Hello, it's Michael and welcome to, finally, uh, we're going to week nine. Uh, this is actually one of the more interesting weeks and this is prepping you for what's gonna come next. And once again, if you didn't get my notice, uh, my apologies, the way that uh, calendar is set up in Canvas makes it somewhat easy to make these mistakes. I apologize though uh, that the actual due date was uh, a week later, but as we are in a weird way have this extra week i'm more than happy to give people the time they need i gave everybody i hope good feedback you're welcome to ask questions about my feedback one mention i made last week that i hoped was more a sigh of relief is for one that your wireframes in a sense can be generated by uh, Airtable. So go back and look at last week's hint video what what i mean is there are patterns by which you can uh, easily display a series of items and allow people to uh, to manipulate them. And if you needed a template, which is I think where a lot of you are, are struggling right now, or some of you, not all of you, is a great template is, for example, a, a list view on Craigslist. Uh, I can do Craigslist really quick if you want me to. Um, yeah, I mean, Craigslist shows you where to put items and how to display them to be able to manipulate large data sets. So I think I showed this in the video, but let me just show it again. Uh, if you can just draw this out, I'll show you exactly what I'm looking for. So if I, I'll just go to, what's a good one for sale? There we go. So here you see taxonomy, right? I'm really interested in this. This is the whole point of the wireframe and all the work that you've done. So if I'm not seeing this, I'm puzzled because we did a whole bunch of work on taxonomies. Here's a taxonomy of for sale items. And if you went into auto parts, for example, you're gonna be able to see here, actually nice, auto parts. If I clicked here, we'll see what happens, but look at all the cool things. Again, you could, you really don't probably wanna copy all these things because they're pretty fancy, but this one here is uh, able to uh, sort by condition. For example, that's a great, filter right there. I'm just going to do things that are newest. Uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, again, there's fancy things. I'm not really interested in fancy. I'm interested in these words. I'm interested seriously in these words of where you place them and what if, for example, I wanted to pick something different than auto parts, right? So in the, here, they had, they, by the way, they use a drop down. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, bicycle part. So in any case, I can change my mind and I can look at something else or I can look into a detail. These can be used, again, just to put your words into, but I'm really interested in all of this data being real. So uh, one thing I did notice and, and left this comment this week is many are still using placeholders or no data whatsoever. Also, many of you, if you looked um, at the actual records being shown, we did a lot of work in HTML and we worked on that last week. And I think a lot of you still might want to understand all the data that you marked up last week should be visible here. Now, possibly, and this was just a hint. Remember how you made different sections and you made different kind of, of containers because that's what our goal was, is to be able to make maybe several containers. If that's the case, then you can maybe show one container here. But otherwise, uh, you know, if you're looking at a view here um, and then a view here, I do want to see your HTML. We worked on it last week, but this is the time. It's This is really the culmination of eight weeks of work and almost all of the work, if not all of the work, is about the words. So if you're ever showing something that's a placeholder, you're showing something that isn't necessarily actually telling me why, uh, if I went from bike parts to auto parts or whatever, bicycles to auto parts, you saw the data changes. That's about it, right? The data turns into the other kind of data. Everything else uh, remains pretty much the same. So one hope was please use these patterns. These patterns are all around all of the sites that you use. You don't have to invent them. You just have to leverage them by putting in the words that you have spent all this time to come up with. Words and structures too, right? You decided that something was more important than, it, than another, the headings. So I hope to see that. Now, this is Wednesday, <laughs> it technically was due yesterday and we are moving on. 
So please, if you need feedback, let me know. Uh, please submit it. Uh, if, if anything, I'm just going to try to make sure. I just want to see the words and I want to see how all that work actually ends up on the page. Um, but we still need to move on. So, uh, and oh, and another thing, you did a you guys did a great job with flows. I hope, I think you seem to take to this uh, this particular format. Although it isn't uh, a, a couple of things I did notice. It is supposed to be drawn out, so it doesn't have to be so complicated, or not complicated. It doesn't have to be designed. It's just that it does have a particular format, and that format some of you have varied and made it a little bit more personal and in, in different ways. I'm fine with that in, in a way, but there is a purpose for this format and he goes into uh, why this format is important. And I do believe it is a nice format because it doesn't uh, have a lot of repetition to it. It really tries to go in a straight line. And that's one thing that often branches don't, they, they confuse things because I could go here, I could go there. The, the goal of this is really just to communicate a flow. You know, and, and that's what you were supposed to build. You, if you did flows for every possible thing you could do, that really, in a way, should be fairly repetitious. You see what I mean? You're using the same layout. You might change the words, but honestly, the previews of your of your uh, databases should look the same. Yeah. As I said, I tried to say it was an aha moment last week. Aha, right. These are all very, very similar, and they are similar. But this week we get to where things become less similar. How's that for a transition into metadata? So what many of you talked about, and I don't blame you, is ratings. Now remember, ratings were invented on the internet um, almost by mistake, <laughs> but I won't go into the history of this, but I will say the history of the internet, the history of how some of these services began, will be very important. And so therefore, I think I've got a link in here. If I don't go to uh, uh, something like the uh, Wayback Machine, I think it's in here somewhere, if it's not. Um, anyway, uh, I'll make sure to post it. So you can go back in time and look at different uh, sites as they've changed over time. It's really pretty cool. But this is our final. So our final is to take all of the things that you did and please read the rubric. It says this but I'm gonna say it a little bit. I'm gonna say it out loud. Start with data. What is the data? You're going to pick a service where the data is all collected by users and submitted by you. You have to create an account and submit some data. That is it. If it's Wikipedia, you are gonna author a Wikipedia article. And that's the fun, number one. I, as I said, I know you might still be working on that flow, but now you get to see the data and capture it as well as tell me what it is. That's gonna be the beginning of this paper. Hey, Wikipedia asks for X, Y, and Z. What is the data that they use? Next, you're gonna look at structures. All of these, <clears throat> and by the way, I'm, I'm willing to extend this, but you'd be surprised a lot of uh, very popular data oriented sites actually have curated data in them. Uh, but you know, maybe there's a new one. Maybe, maybe they're not. Let me know. I, I know there's a lot around 3D modeling that I've been seeing. Um, if you do 3D modeling, there's a lot of places to share. It's usually a site where people share some kind of specific content, much like Craigslist, which is on here too. So people are there to do different things, for example. Okay, so you get the idea. You're gonna pick one of these, and because of the number of people in class, many of you may pick the same one, but I'm, I'm gonna probably cap it at maybe two people doing the same service. Uh, I'll let you know, but that's one of the first things is to pick a service that you're interested in or that you're familiar with. Uh, and then the rest of this week is me kind of griping about uh, ratings and asking questions to you about ratings. There's also a video for me talking about why are we taking information, turning it into knowledge? Is because of ratings and social proof. It's about trust. It's about building some kind of third party. Like everyone has had that issue in their uh, in their sorting. What do you sort by? What's popular? What does popularity even mean? So that's what the goal of this week is to really talk about what that means. And just being me, this happens to be about wine, but this has to do with rating scales are not all created equal. They're all actually different. And so ratings you know, have inner you know, issues trusting them. 
Uh, and then I just wanted to give a quick shout out to new numbers because we skipped numbers and we didn't want to do anything with numbers because numbers really gets into data visualization, which is a wonderful topic. It comes with all the issues about trust, though. You can lie in a data visualization. But these are ones that I felt are just if you're interested in the subject, there is a whole uh, course in that. And it is also a, a form of information architecture. We focus again, almost 100% on words and what do the words mean? And this is numbers and maybe a little bit more about graphical ways of uh, representing that. And here's some also interactive ones because I think adding interaction is even more exciting when it comes to data visualization because that's the sort of filters like you're doing with words. And, um, and this is my thing just to make sure you're on the right track. Some of these, uh, these different services, they branch out, they have a lot of extra things they all started and still remain focused on one core type of structure uh, i'll just say again we were talking you get you get the data structurally they all have very unique ways of displaying things in particular ways so you'll want to have the next part of your paper investigating that you might want to look at the html for example because they will all have very interesting and and really amazing ways of displaying your record that you're going to submit and then the same thing is true you're going to look at well how do they help you organize it how would anyone find uh, what you just put in why would you be incentivized to do this and so you'll see their taxonomies they'll see what taxonomies you're allowed to add and then when you get to how it's displayed you'll start to see about that how do they maybe use your identity or metadata in helping people find you because um, identity is a form of metadata. You're, you're gonna be a separate object or a separate database than the things that you make and you have attributes too. So that's why this week really opens up kind of the modern internet 2.0, whereas we might have spent most of our time in the initial internet where you're just getting things and displaying them, which was great and still works to this day. Uh, that is week nine. I have asked if we wanted to delay the uh, the final paper, maybe having this week's little bit of a, a timing snafu. Maybe people do want to delay. Maybe not. Again, it's just about I want you to do your best work. You will not be showing anybody the work that you did in wireframing and learning taxonomies, but now you get to apply your knowledge to these services and use your new skills and understanding of information architecture to see how did these people do it? Because they all absolutely 100% became successful based on very clever IA approaches. 100% because how do you organize, you know, 100,000 uh, posts per second? You know, like you need you need some ideas behind it to make that even work. And they did make it work. And uh, that's why these are here and they're all great examples and you will do your stuff and I can't wait uh, to help. So next week we'll actually be sharing out the Medium article. We're gonna do this work on Medium, um, which is also on this list. Pretty cool. You can do the thing in Medium and talk about Medium. It's so cool. All right, any questions, please email me. I'm always here. I did give feedback to everyone who posted, so uh, please submit as soon as you can. I would say sooner the better. Thank you so much, and thank you for your understanding. Sorry about that snafu on the date. <laughs>